Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is reflex clastron or single cavity clastron. In the earlier video, we have studied two cavity clastron amplifier. In that case, two cavities were used, input cavity or buncher cavity and output cavity or catcher cavity and different bunches were formed. That was the case in case of uh, two uh, cavity clastron amplifier. Now this is single cavity clastron amplifier. So as shown in this diagram, only a single cavity is used. <coughs> the construction details are, are shown in this diagram. It consists of a cathode terminal uh, which is producing electron beam. <clears throat> now the focusing electrodes which are used to focus the electron beam towards the output side. This part is called repeller anode. Actually it is the anode which causes uh, or which uh, causes returning of the electrons back to the cavity. So it is repeller anode. Look at the connections. This negative terminal of the power supply is connected to this repeller anode. So whenever electrons are moving forward, they are reaching up to repeller anode and getting reflected back towards the cavity. Now this is the cavity. This part indicates the gap of the cavity. Then for this cavity, positive supply, more positive supply is applied at this terminal and output is taken from the upper end. Suppose uh, certain electrons are passing whenever there is no cavity gap voltage then there won't be any change in the speed or in the motion of such electrons whenever the cavity voltage is zero. In that case electrons will reach at the repeller anode, anode will reflect these electrons and will those electrons will again come back into this space. <clears throat> now let us consider that some electrons are passing through this cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is slightly positive since the gap voltage is slightly positive, certain kind of acceleration will be provided to these electrons. Then again, these electrons will reach up to the repeller anode and will be reflected back. Do remember whenever the electrons are entering uh, in the cavity and cavity gap is slightly positive, acceleration will be provided. Another case, if the electrons are entering into the cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is negative, in that case, very less acceleration rather retardation will be provided to such electrons. Again, such electrons will get repelled back from the anode. The point is that some electrons are moving with more speed, whereas some electrons are moving with less speed. Some electrons are accelerated while some electrons are retarded due to the difference in the voltage applied at the uh, cavity because of which like this is very much similar to the two cavity clastron because of the difference in the speed of moving electrons different bunches are created now the electrons which are getting accelerated that means the electrons which are entering whenever the cavity gap is positive those electrons are getting accelerated these accelerated electrons takes energy from the cavity whereas some electrons are entering into the cavity whenever the cavity gap voltage is negative they are getting retarded so that takes the energy from the cavity so always this give and take action of energy uh, from the cavity is maintained which produces sustained oscillations in the cavity and the output is generated from this point so make it more simple Again, due to difference in the speed, uh, I mean, uh, some electrons are accelerated, some electrons uh, speed is reduced because of which the <clears throat> different bunches of electrons are formed and all these bunches are taken out. I mean, the amplified signal is taken out from this end. So this is about the construction and working of reflex clash tone. Next is we'll discuss different modes in case of reflex clash tone. There is one term which is called round trip transit time. What we discussed while studying the working of reflex clash tron. Electrons enter into the cavity gap, they move forward, reaches up to the repeller anode and again gets reflected back. So the time period for the electron to move from cavity gap to the repeller anode and again come from repeller anode <coughs> to the cavity gap after reflection is called <clears throat> round trip transit time. Now this round trip transit time depends on the cavity voltage 
and the repeller voltage that you are applying at the repeller end. So when the cavity is tuned to a particular frequency, to a specific frequency, then different modes exist inside the cavity gap. All these modes, whatever are existing in the cavity gaps, again depends on the cavity voltage and the repeller voltage, that is the voltage, negative voltage applied to the anode terminal. Out of all these modes, the mode which is having energy equals to 2 gives the maximum output from the cavity. The parameters related to this mode are, there is one term which is called a bunching parameter. So that is denoted by X dash which is 2.408. Then the Bessel's function corresponding to this bunching parameter is 0.52 and in this case efficiency is 22.71%. Now applications of the reflex klystron. Reflex klystron are used in the laboratories for the measurement of micro signals, that is micro measurements. Then they can be used as a local oscillator in micro receivers. Then they can be used as a signal source uh, in terms of a micro generator. And they can be used as an oscillator in parametric amplifier. Now let us solve one numerical based on this reflex klystron. So given question is, the reflex klystron operates at peak mode, that is n is equals to 2, having beam voltage, beam voltage is denoted by V0, which is 350 volt, and beam current, it is denoted by I0, which is 1515 milliampere. When the signal voltage is 45 volt, calculate first part input power, second part output power, third part efficiency. Now do remember the basic values. When the a uh, reflex klystron is operating in the peak mode that is n is equals to 2 mode then x dash that is bunching parameter is 2.408 and Bessel's function j1 of x dash is 0.52. Now the uh, numerical is straightforward. I have already written the formula. Input power is V0 into I0. So simply put the values. So V0 is 350 into I0 is 50 milliampere. Since it is in milliampere, I need to multiply it with 10 raised to minus 3. So input power is 5.35 watt. This is the formula to calculate the corresponding output power. Equation is 2 V0 I0 X dash J1 of X dash divided by 2 pi n minus pi by 2. So put the values 2 into V0 is 350 into I0, I0 is 15 milliampere, so 15 into 10 raised to minus 3 into, this is X dash, X dash is 2.408, 2.408 into J1 of X dash, that is 0.52, <clears throat> so it is 0.52 divided by 2 pi n, value of n is 2, so 2 pi into 2 minus pi by 2. So if you solve this on the calculator, then this answer of output power is 1.196 Watt. Now the third part, efficiency. It is simple ratio of output to the input power and it should be expressed in percentage. So multiplied by 100. So this gives me efficiency eta is output power that is 1.196, 1.196 upon input power that is 5.25, 5.25 into 100. So efficiency is equals to 22.78%, 22.78%. So as far as these numericals are concerned, these are pretty simple. You just have to uh, memorize the formula, limited formula are there. So dear students, that's it for uh, today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.